Mather's doing a pretty good job of Larry Coker's staff, huh? Yeah, we saw him on Thursday night with his Miami, Cane, Miami Hurricanes secondary coaching the defensive backs. Remember, what was the big question mark about Miami coming into this season? How their young secondary right. would play with all those first-round draft picks gone. <laughs> dare, we, dare we say it? They're playing pretty darn well already. You know, a lot of That's sophomores right. and freshmen in the lineup. So you mentioned the Stoops coaching family, Dad Stoops, Mom Stoops. They've spawned some pretty darn good guys. Great people along with great coaches. A little side note to that. Yeah. Now Texas Tech, third and 11. The ball is on the three-yard line. And let's talk strategy here if Oklahoma holds them because they'll want another timeout and make Texas Tech punt from deep in their end zone unless Cliff Kingsbury can get a first down here. Sooners bring four. Kingsbury sees pressure. Penalty flag is thrown, throws it away, almost intercepted. Brandon Shelby looks like he was being held, and that's going to be a safety well, if it is. If it's holding in the end zone, they can call the safety here. Let's see if they do. Second safety of the night if it is. Holding on the offense. He's off to the safety. And it is. reaction by Mike Leach tells it all. A lot of frustration at this point. This is not how his offense is supposed to work. Take a look at Cliff Kingsbury. This is Kingsbury in the shotgun formation. Look to the right of your screen. Number 65 is Casey Keck, the offensive tackle. He's caught with the, he was spotted holding as Cliff Kingsbury's in the end zone. Automatic safety, which means now Texas Tech must punt again or kick off from the 20-yard line. Oklahoma will get the ball one more time before the half ends in great field position. Let's see how this thing turns out. That's frustration on the part of Coach Leach. Without a doubt. And you can understand why. All mm -hmm. that great game planning has gone awry because the athletes of Oklahoma and their game plan have proven superior to this point. Well, Bob Stoops telling us that they did not have a hangover after that Texas A&M loss. A lot of players said it was an embarrassment. They shook it off right away. They knew they still had a lot to play for. On the other hand, uh, Mike Leach was concerned. They've had some very emotional wins this year, especially over Texas last week. And we asked him, are you concerned about that? There was so much hoopla about that. He goes, of course I was. We tried to focus on more details this week. And we mentioned it at the top of the top of the, the program. That was the first win for a Texas Tech football team over a top five ranked opponent in school history. So and, and when you couple it with that, that, that they beat the University of Texas, one of their mm -hmm. bitter rivals, you can imagine the back slapping and That's the right. praise that went on all week in Lubbock. And as a player, you try to resist it, but it sure feels good. And sometimes it takes your edge away. Instead of punting it this time, they're going to kick it. Up over the 40 to about the 44-yard line. Sooners will have 28 seconds to work with. Well, Texas Tech is the best team in Texas, and I think that would include the Cowboys and the Texans. Here's who they've beaten this year. How about SMU? They took care of the Baylor Bears. They took care of A&M, and, of course, they also took care of the Longhorns of Texas. Yeah, what beat SMU on the road, beat A&M beat and in College Station in an overtime thriller. Texas at home last week and of course beating Baylor and you know they're proudly wearing the Texas State Champs t-shirts around I'm just surprised what no Harden Simmons no Harden, you know <laughs> no rice uh, no rice where's Clyde Bulldog Turner from Harden Simmons somebody call up Kenny Asheville <laughs> can we get a matchup here Houston they didn't there get a piece go. of it Dana Dimmel needs a piece of this over the middle incomplete my goodness should have been intercepted and that's indicative of the first half for Texas Tech not making very many plays when the opportunity presents itself. If you're Ryan Aycock, how do you miss this one? Maybe Curtis Fagan's shadow in front of him. See right there? Probably probably took a little concentration away as Fagan crossed in front of him. But that's that should have been Ryan Aycock's second mm. interception of the year and could have put the end of, end of things yeah. in the first half and really given Texas Tech one more shot before the half was over. Well, Cliff Kingsbury, don't turn off the dials yet because he has been able to uh, be the architect of comebacks. He had six while he was in high school with the New Braunfels Unicorns. This time it's Quentin Griffin as we go inside of 20 seconds to play in the half, and Oklahoma wants more. 
They have one timeout remaining. Going with the quick, quick hurry up. They get the first down, so the clock has to stop and get the chain set. They have to be ready to go as soon as the, ball, as soon as the ball's whistled in. And he'll spike the football. Only lost two seconds there. That's a good job by Oklahoma in their two-minute drill. Well coached. Well, you talk about uh, the two-minute drill. That's a drill that really hasn't changed over the over the season for Oklahoma, has it? No. When we talk with Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator, he's, he mentioned that Ernie Zampezi, one of the great offensive minds in the NFL, and one of his coaches when he played in the NFL, taught him that in your two-minute drill, the best thing to do is to tune it up and have only about 10 plays as we look at the scoring drives less than two minutes under Bob Soups, they will strike you. But what do they have is about 10 plays and it's the same 10 plays in their two minute drill each and every week as opposed to changing mm -hmm. them all the time. Just keep getting them tuned up every time they go. Good strategy. Yeah, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't oh, yeah. it? The, the beauty Repetition. is the simplicity, Repetition. right? Ball. Ball, start. ball start, offense, five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Just a reminder, our Chili's halftime report, Ernie Johnson standing by. He'll update you on all the scores and highlights from Rivals Week. How about Carson Palmer at USC today against UCLA? My goodness. Don't have the final numbers, but we saw a bunch of big plays. I believe at least four touchdown oh, yeah. passes today and didn't play most of the fourth quarter. Huge day for him. And <laughs> using USC. And USC. Huge win over the Bruins. Second down and 15 for the Sooners. Final 15 seconds. Hibble steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle. Are they going to call it complete? No. Hit the ground. Antoine Savage could not scoop it out. He gave it a good. He gave it a good appearance, didn't he? Yes, he did. But those officials, I will say this: they catch so much criticism all the time. But this is a group that is hustling and was on the spot. Let's take a look. All right, look at it from look at it from the end zone. Okay, he's coming right at you. Antone Savage running the cross, crossing route. See, underneath Ooh. him. Excellent call. Ball, ball will hit him. Bounced on the ground, bounced back up to him. The officials were on the spot. Give them the credit. So were our camera guys. Good yes, job, gentlemen. Were. So the Sooners now with nine seconds. Third and 15. That's a moot point at this point. And three receivers here. Probably going to fling it downfield and try and get something. Maybe a pass interference. Hibble throws into the flat, passes incomplete. Stretching out of bounds, it's Will Peoples. We have time for one more play. That play was designed to get them hopefully in field goal range and with the wind behind them take a shot at a long field goal attempt at the buzzer. Now you just have to throw the ball down and hope you get, just throw it towards the end zone. Hope you get a big play on the last play of the half. Clearly out of field goal range at this point. And I think that shows respect for that Texas Tech offense. You need to put a lot of points on the board because you know these guys can hang, as, as Barry Switzer would say, half a hundred on you real quick. Yeah, and they, they have no problems with coming back. They're not really daunted, are they? This will be the longest four seconds in the history of football. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma. Well, the Sooners are going to take the time out. And now both teams are out of timeouts. Well, they don't carry over. That's right. You don't so get you green might, stamps. So you might as well you might as well design the, the exact play you want on the mm -hmm. sideline and try and get something before you go into the half. Well, this telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Oklahoma, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Oklahoma or the Big 12 Conference. Now, this Texas Tech team came in riding a three-game win streak, their highest ranking since 1998, the first time they've been ranked since 1998 they had high expectations but when Oklahoma took the opening drive 345 it took them to score they set the tempo for this game and they've really never looked back Texas Tech has not been able to get into the flow and I think that the, the opening drive was one thing but Texas Tech had been there before they were down 14 to 0 last mm -hmm. week against Texas but Oklahoma's defense came right out and stuffed them and Tech's offense used to eating up yards used to eating up a little bit of time used to you know getting getting get, getting downfield they have not gotten it done look at what they've done just 12 yards hey, look at that. 10 rushing yards <laughs> that's right I mean that's just not going to get it done no it is going to be 10 rushes two yards total last play of the half Hibble throws it the length of the field tipped up almost caught by the Sooners Peoples had a shot at it 
Could not put the gloves. And Texas Tech will head to the locker room. A disappointing 30 minutes, but this was close, Charles. And it's exactly what you're taught and, and, and what you don't want to happen if you're Texas Tech. If you go up for the ball, you have to bat it down or come down with it. Here's Craig Seger with Bob Stoops. Well, Coach, you know, obviously Texas Tech is a good come from behind team. How important was it to try to get more points on the board? Come from behind team or not, isn't that what you're supposed to do on offense? Try and get more points on the board? So that's all we were trying to do. But the way you're, we, we plan on playing the second half also. The way your defense is playing, they had seven possessions, only three first downs. You have three sacks, two safeties. Why have they been so su successful against Texas Tech? Uh, we're executing. Uh, we're getting good pressure to the quarterback, and, and we're covering well, tackling well. Hopefully that's, that's what we're after the second half. We'll need to. Right, thanks a lot. Tremendous defense by OU. 25 to nothing, two safeties. They have the lead over Texas Tech. Now let's go to EJ and the big game house. And the Raiders straight ahead. I'm Ron.